Yeah, all right. Uh, hi, so that's Dr. Ben. Next question is from Robbie. Good morning, Robbie. All right. Um, with all the new rage and debate about kids going back to school, yeah, I know. I wanted to see your thoughts on the NEJM report on ice on uh, from Iceland. Okay. And yeah, I've looked at that one and a couple others. There was another one from Germany and uh, there's another one. I don't remember where it's from, but yes, I've seen these. They're all basically saying the same thing. Um, so the summary states that even if children do get infected, they are less likely to transmit the disease to others than adults. We have not found a single instance of a child infecting parents in their little tiny study. Yeah, that they can confirm. Okay, so yeah, um, uh, yeah. So what, what's all this mean? All right. The problem I think people are running into is that kids are exposed to about as much COVID as anybody else, uh, in some cases maybe more, but a lot of kids are dealing with the virus and the problem I think is at the level of detection. You have to have a lot of virus in you for the virus to be detectable and you have to hit just the right spot with that Q-tip or else you are not gonna pick up the virus and yeah, you're gonna say this person's fine even when they may have virus down inside of them. Um, I don't recall whether they did the correct test in this study. I bet they didn't. One second, let's look for the word fecal. Yeah, not found. Yeah, okay. So they're presumably doing uh, um, swab tests or saliva tests, something like that. Um, or they're looking for antibody tests, which is fine, but the milder the case you get, the less likely that there are detectable numbers of antibodies at the end of it as well. Yeah, so <laughs> there's also that. Um, this is even in people that, where you actually had a confirmed um, uh, case. So if they had done the test with fecal testing, um, which would be disgusting and I don't know, people are weird about that. So they, I don't know if you could even get permission. You could probably get it, but you'd have to, you have to convince a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> why do you want to play with kids poo? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then you could have picked up, uh, that's a better readout on um, the amount of virus that is present. And you might have caught some that um, were missing otherwise. Um, possibility is, though, that, uh, yeah, kids may just be more resistant because they have fewer receptors or pick, pick a reason. Yeah. And in that case, the problem is, so the problem comes in from various other studies. So you can, these, I guess these aren't really studies. These are just uh, data that I'm seeing at the state level. So a lot of states are compiling their um, uh, number of cases from childcare settings of all sorts. And what they're seeing is that um, in the three states cases that I've looked at, it was about a two to one ratio of adults to children um, getting enough virus inside them to give back a positive test. So these are almost certainly cases of children infecting adults or adults infecting children and infecting adults again, because, I don't know, the adults just have so much more exposure to children and plenty of children were definitely infected. It's very difficult to prove for certain that you got the virus from anywhere. Actually, I would say it's probably impossible because you can't tell. You can walk it back to the most likely time, but if there's somebody else out there who's asymptomatic and there are enough of these people now that it's just really difficult, you could have run into somebody and you not realized it and been um, uh, exposed there. And yeah, there's, there's just no way to do it. So part of it is that it's really hard to show that anybody infected anybody else, but good. They're, they're not finding a whole lot of infection being driven by kids. Great. At the same time, it kind of reads like a virus apologist uh, paper saying the virus isn't so bad. Send the kids back to school. And I would like to push back against that idea because any virus infection can spread. You, the virus doesn't necessarily know it's inside of a kid. And doesn't know that, oh, oh, I'm not, when I'm coming out of the nose, I'm not supposed to infect anybody? Okay. Yeah, virus can't tell that. And so there is a risk. You cannot have virus transmission and have virus transmission only in the ways that you like. Virus transmission, by its very nature, always spills over to something else and somebody else. 
And yeah, maybe it takes 10 kids to infect, you know, one teacher. But it looks like that teacher is getting infected at a very high rate, uh, at least twice as high as the rate that the kids are getting infected. So this is very dangerous for the people that are there with the kids, unless you've got a, um, oh, what's that, uh, what's that book where they uh, all <laughs> start chanting, kill the pig, yeah, and they're living on an island and everything's gone, yeah, just... <laughs> terribly wrong yeah anyway yeah. good book yeah read it uh, wonderful dystopia but um <laughs> yeah school doesn't work like that you've got adults that are involved and those adults also have to go home and so if the adults get infected then bam they then spread it out into the rest of the world you can't allow virus to be transmitted anywhere and expect to be able to get this thing under control so I am still very much, from what I've read, um, of the opinion that you want to minimize the amount of kids in school. And um, there are going to be some people that don't have a choice about whether to send their kids to school or not because they have to because they need somebody to watch them while they're off working or something like that. And yeah, for people like that, it's good that schools are there. And I'm glad there are teachers brave enough to go in, even though it looks like a lot of them are getting infected. And the only way, if I was one of those teachers that I would want to go in, is if my school district was providing me with unlimited proper N95 masks and a little uh, little five-minute class on how to put them on and make sure they're on nicely. Yeah, um, otherwise, I, I just don't like it. And for, yeah, for anybody who has the option to not send their kids to school, that is very much the option I would recommend right now because every new infection, whether it's a kid or an adult, sets us back. It pushes back the timeline by something like another month until we can get rid of this thing. We need to have no more infections and then track down all the long-term asymptomatic carriers, if there are any, and then finally we can get rid of this virus, but we can't get rid of it by allowing a certain amount of spread. There's no acceptable amount of spread of a virus like SARS coronavirus 2. That's that's where the science is, at least as I understand it. And yeah, there's nothing about this study that changes it. And um, yeah, uh, frankly, yeah, I, I get what they're saying. It's consistent with the facts plus a little bit of interpretation. And um, yeah, just I don't like it. <laughs> Because I think there are multiple ways you can interpret this situation, and they're taking the, you know, rosy glasses, half full, everything's awesome kind of approach, and uh, the other side is equally valid and is the one that leads us to more COVID-19 ongoing in the world, which nobody needs. So there we go. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, this is Ask Dr. Ben.